Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that. And last time, we discussed the way Jesus dealt with his enemies and the enemies of God. Today, we'll talk about the courage of Jesus. As with all the virtues, Jesus had the virtue of fortitude, courage, to the greatest degree possible. But what does that mean? And they entered into Capernaum, and forthwith upon the Sabbath days, going into the synagogue, he taught them. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he was teaching them as one having power, and not as the scribes. Mark 1, 21-22 Jesus spoke with confidence and assertiveness, as well as the certainty of authority that comes from being God. There was no reason for him to doubt himself or the truth of his teachings. Now, while it's a good thing for Christians to sometimes question their own words, even take them back when they phrase something especially badly, we don't need to hesitate about the words of Jesus. He was perfect in what he said and did. We're not. Therefore, we should have complete confidence in the authority of Jesus and what he said, but not in our own authority. And when he entered into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, a great tempest arose in the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves. But he was asleep. And they came to him and awaked him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And Jesus saith to them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then rising up, he commanded the winds and the sea, and there came a great calm. Matthew 8, 23-26 Jesus and his disciples were in a boat and in danger of being swallowed up by the sea, and Jesus shows no fear at all, even questioning the fear that his disciples have of the storm and the death that it can bring. Jesus' unflinching courage in the face of the threat of death is consistent in the scriptures, no matter where that threat comes from. Pilate, therefore, saith to him, Speakest thou not to me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and I have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou shouldst not have any power against me, unless it were given thee from above. Therefore he that hath delivered me to thee hath the greater sin. John nineteen ten to 11 The Romans were very good at executing people, and Jesus has no fear of them either. Again, the devil took him up into a very high mountain, and shewed him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and said to him, All these will I give thee, if falling down thou wilt adore me. Then Jesus said to him, Begone, Satan! For it is written, The Lord thy God shalt thou adore, and him only shalt thou serve. Matthew 4, 8-10 Even when faced with the worst enemy of all, being taken to high altitudes like mountains and the pinnacles of temples, Jesus doesn't flinch. He refutes Satan's lies and commands him to leave. And the devil does. In all of these verses and many more, we see an absolutely indomitable courage and force of will, and we know that Jesus wants us to act with courage too, just as he wanted his disciples to. But the boat in the midst of the sea was tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary, and in the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking upon the sea, and immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good heart, it is I, fear ye not. Matthew fourteen twenty four twenty five and 27 Sometimes, though, even brave people feel afraid and start to falter. And Peter, making answer, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee upon the waters. And he said, Come. And Peter, going down out of the boat, walked upon the water to come to Jesus. But seeing the wind strong, he was afraid. And when he began to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and took hold of him and said to him, O oh, thou of little faith, why didst thou doubt? Matthew 14, 
28 to 31. The courage of others sometimes fails, but the courage of Jesus never fails. Jesus doesn't want us to fear the weather, our enemies, our physical surroundings, deprivations, suffering, or even death itself. And he never feared these things even once. He did pray to God, asking to be spared the crucifixion, but not because of fear. There is, however, something that Jesus, in his perfect sinlessness, didn't need to worry about, but which we should. And I say to you, my friends, be not afraid of them who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will shew you whom you shall fear. Fear ye him who, after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say to you, fear him. Luke 12, 4-5 We should fear only one thing, being tempted into sin. Only mortal sin can estrange us from God and endanger our souls. There isn't anything worth being afraid of by comparison to that. So Jesus is the model of courage, fearing no one and nothing, and since he utterly rejected sin, he had nothing to be afraid of. We should do the same, utterly rejecting sin and fearing nothing else. Next time, the respectfulness of Jesus. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.